Hello and welcome to this video. I am currently sitting in a dread for a very specific reason. I will be doing these wonderful new sites um, that are generated by launching a Concord Rogue Analysis Beacon. Um, these are the beacons that you need to launch the new uh, capital uh, sites uh, introduced in, uh, in a recent patch by CCP. Um, and as I said before, I'm sitting in a dread. Now, a little testing has been done. You are able to do this in a dread, and you are able to do it in a carrier. I do not have access to a supercarrier or a titan, so those that will, I cannot really speak on the subject, but I'm assuming that you can probably do it in those as well. More specifically, for a dread, we will be using a whore dread, and we will actually be using the an identical fit on the wiki pages for the Phoenix. Uh, we will be using the T2 uh, high angle fit for the Dread. I've just renamed it Squawk. Don't worry too much about that. Uh, the Phoenix is great for application to subcapital ships. It is basically recognized as the king of Hall currently in terms of the Dreads. Um, and it, it does really well on the sites. Some small note here is I did try to run the site in an angle far, uh, where I utilized the same high angle of fit on the wiki page. I was not successful. There are a cur like a couple of different ships on those sites that gets too close and orbits you too fast for you to apply very well. So that is an annoyance there. Now there's a slight refit. We, instead of running a neutralizer in our high slot, we are running a smart bomb. Uh, for one specific reason, there is a single frigate that flies too fast for our tops to apply to it, but it dies relatively quickly to the smart bomb. So that is the literal cause of use for that. Um, another thing we are going to be keeping in mind is that the fastest that I've been able to do this is seven siege cycles. So we're going to be needing at least a thousand strunt to be doing these sites. I'm bringing myself some extra strunt for further cycles. Uh, but this this should be enough. Like at least a thousand should be enough for you to deal these sites. Uh, that is it for the dreads part. Uh, we'll just quickly look over the fit for the carrier. Uh, the carrier fit that I've used is actually almost identical to again the brave wiki pages. And I'm just going to be importing and simulate the fit. This is the fits you'll find on the wiki page. The main difference is we've removed three mid slots um, instead because we're going to need our fighters to actually fly fast enough to catch some, uh, some of the more average ships that arrive at these sites. If I accept simulation and show you the current fit that I use, we are running two drone navigation computer twos and we are running a uh like an active rep for the carrier uh we're still keeping on to the network sensor array because we can um and we are still keeping on with the regular rigs that you find in the wiki so there will be no need to change your rigs um another thing is we are obviously running a cap booster which is necessary for us to run the active rep but we will be slurping these cap boosters so you need to bring a lot a lot of cap boosters to be able to do these sites and final of all you need a body i have not been able to do these sites as a lone carrier pilot i have needed the help of someone else this is simply because you you don't clear the sites fast enough to actually complete the site in terms of fighters that we are going to be using we are using two lights, and we're going to be using Templars. And in this case, I'm just using Templar 1s to make it as accessible as possible. So it is possible to do it with T1 fighters. And then we're using Drummies as our support fighters. Um, and this is once again to slow down some of these very fast moving drones. Because if we don't do that, we will not be applying damage. That is really all for the carriers and I will be moving on to show you how to do the sites in a dread 
and if I am able to get a partner to help me, I will be showing you to do the sites in carriers as well. Although do expect them to be sped up as the sites are relatively, they are very difficult, sure, but they are also quite simple if you've done any type of redding in a carrier before. All right, I have reshipped into a dread and we will be undocking and going to a system to do this in. Now, keep in mind, I am on the CC test server, so I'm not really being careful about the things that I do. I will be gating this. Uh, I do have my local up because I like having it up and I, actually my overview is a bit of a mess because um, usually I would have my, my Corbin Alliance chat down here. Obviously there's nothing going on on the test server at this moment because you know, who cares? And I'm not gonna care about these scans at all. So we're gonna be minimizing this just to give you guys a bit of a better look. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't live comfortably without having my local open. Anyways, we are going to be going to a nearby system. We're going to be jumping into V0DF. And okay. so we're going to be just slow gating to an XBuy system. While we are aligning here, I can use a bit of time to explain exactly what we're going to be doing. Now, I carry some Scourge with me because there are some rats with Kinetic. Although, in my experience, just sticking to the Rage Torpedoes is perfectly fine. We are not going to be using the Missile Range script either. We're basically going to be stuck on the Precision script for the best application as possible, as we want to be clearing these sites out as fast as possible. Um, and for some of this, you could be using a much uh, more focused ship for application. We are just going to be using the fit that you find on, as I said earlier, the Brave Wiki. And we're gonna go into warp now. Woo! So as we're warping around, we're going to be launching one of these. Now, at the bottom it says available CEQs, which is these complex encryption qubits, and a new thing that CCP has implemented into the game with the, this specific beacon. Uh, it just indicates how many times you are able to launch this. Currently my bar is full, which means that I am able to launch this three times until the next time it's refreshed. So there is a limit to how many of these a single person can launch. Although I can launch this and someone else can link up to it and they will be using their CEQ. So even though I'm the one that launches it, I don't use any CEQs if I'm not the one who links to it. And I'll be showing that a bit more detail once we arrive in XY system. Another thing to mention, as we are hopefully jumping through this gate any minute now. Thank you, game. Ah, wonderful. There can only be one of these launched per system, so it's a good idea to check your system if it's in there. It doesn't seem like anyone has launched any, so we will be going to a bookmark that I made earlier. You can obviously do this any place, but it falls within the same rules as other deployables. You cannot launch this within a thousand or two thousand of another. And for that matter, let's actually take a look at it. I apparently do not have these on my list. Interesting. Never mind. But we'll be taking a look at the beacon itself. So, it's just allowed in wormhole space, posh in the crystal space, and dead space areas. So, you can only launch this in low second null sec. Additionally, as you can see, we have a distance from the deploying ship, other mobile analysis beacons, which is uh, interesting. We also have a distance from control towers, we have a distance from stargates, we have a distance from moon mining, and so on and so forth. It has a bit of details. This is just the regular ship mass, shield capacity, and all the other stuff, different stuff. And we have the, the basic accessible range as you have for any other wreck or whatever, is the 2,500 meters. Now, it does say cargo is accessible by all. However, once you're done with the site, you have a minute before the beacon itself self-destructs. In that minute, you, and only you who launched it, can access it. 
Once it self-destructs, though, the wreck is a free-for-all. Anyone can go and grab whatever is in the wreck. So you have that one minute before the self-destruct to grab this beacon. And we should be landing shortly. All right. Here we are, and we should be stopped. Wonderful. So I'm going to click and launch it for self. Now, any capital pilot should be able to launch this. The requirements for launching it is anchoring three. And if you're in the cat group, you have anchoring three. So we launch for selves. It gives us a bit of an indication that you can only launch one per system. It does the basic activation for the launch. Gives a bit, a bit of graphic as we enjoy our time here, waiting for it to launch. And once it's activated, we get this in-game clickable button. Now, anyone in a carrier, or sorry, not in just a carrier, but a capital, is able to, within range, to click this link and begin uh, linking up to the actual beacon. As I said before, I have yet to use any of my CEQs. I will begin using them the moment I link up to it. So I will begin my link. And here we go. The link starts. And you, uh, you get a single buff, which is the 10% damage resistant bonus. And other than that, you are now stuck here for the next four minutes as it finishes the linking process. And we should be able to see that I have now used one of my CEQs. Here comes the boring part, though. Now it's just a waiting time. And it's just clearing the sites as fast as you possibly can. With the T2 Phoenix fit that is on the wiki page, it is honestly quite easy, in my opinion, to clear these sites. So while we wait, I'm going to take myself a sip of coffee. And here we are. 10 seconds left, or 8 seconds by the linking. I really hope I did a cut there, because that was a wonderful 4 minutes of wait time. Now that it's launched, it is now scanning. It has a one hour lifetime. As you can see, we've already used four minutes of that lifetime during the linking process, and it will be scanning for 10 minutes. It is now our job to kill any hostiles entering the grid so that it can continue to scan. If we are not able to kill all the hostiles within a one hour period of this scanning down, for a 10 minutes time of being without hostiles on grid, it will self-destruct and you will not get any loot. So, the faster we can clear the sites, the better. And, time to siege up. Oh, and don't do like me, not activating your actual precision. Now, in my experience, with this specific fit from the wiki page, it takes about five to six uh, cycles to kill a battleship, and four to five to kill the, um, the smaller ships. And we might as well just start repairing. And as soon as those died, it will go back to scanning again. So this is a lot of reacting to the grid being filled with something and killing it as fast as possible. The faster we can kill it, the faster this beacon can go back to scanning. And in my testing, this takes about a total of 39 to 40 minutes. So this is a while. It is up to you to decide whether or not this is a worth it to you as you will be here for quite a while. You can cycle your siege modules um, 
maybe you'll be able to finish the site right as your siege module ends and you will be able to potentially warp off if necessary or jump out of system but if you go on these sites with a dread you are basically dedicating yourself to finishing this site because the moment there are no pilots on this site and the drones come in they will immediately kill the beacon all right 30 seconds left of scanning and we got some last coming in here so we will have to do one at least one more siege cycle let's assume this will be our last one Now, I haven't really spent any time trying to say which rats to focus first, which ones not to focus first, etc. Because in the Dread, you don't really care. At least in my experience, you don't really care. It becomes a problem once you're in the carriers. And doing this with two carriers. Uh, I personally really like this spawn. It only takes four tops, at least with my skills, to kill it. Um, really like that. Quickly battleship to remove. Also, one thing is like, it has some really nice bounties. That's obviously a bonus. Yeah, these guys out here. These are the reason, at least in the carrier refit, we're using tr two drone navigation computers. Because they are running really fast. And we need our fighters to actually be able to catch up to them. This is also why we use the... Um, why we use the webbing support fighters. Let's hope this is the last guy before we clear this out fast enough. Come on, come on. Once again, one of those guys that flies really fast at the edge of uh, your range. Once he's in range, he's gonna orbit you. This guy should be relatively easy to kill. These guys always take six torps cycles in my experience, but you know, sometimes you get lucky and get a really good hit, like the one right there. All right, let's wrap back up. Make sure our cap is filled to the brim. And we'll just wrap it up to about 87% shields. We don't really need more. Oh, luck was not on our side. We got nine seconds left. Let's hope these two are the last ones. Would have been very nice to end it there. But yes, these drones will continuously come in and warp in as long as this can is around. It is random. What warps in is also random. So... It's just kill it as fast as it arrives. The majority of the drones, in my experience, is has an EM weakness, where some of the drones will have a kinetic weakness. Uh, right now, we're dealing with this guy. Again, an EM weakness, but with thermal. And once again, this guy takes six top cycles, at least with my skills. Wonderful. Let's keep an eye on this. It's been alive for just 30 minutes. So we were able to do this. Oh, now that's just, that's just rude, rogues. That's just rude. All right. Last one, please. So we can finish this. Once again, the towers moving fast, moving far out of range. But again, we're using... The wiki page we have a quite a long flight range to actually catch them they should die quite easily uh, it looks like we're going to be going through some more cycles we are not the lucky ones today These guys die relatively quick. Now these ones, I might as well mention it, they will web and scram you. Sorry, they will scram you. My bad, not web you. 
Can we get one more cycle in here? Come on. Oh, well that sucks. We're gonna have to go through a repair cycle here. I do not believe we'll make it within this siege cycle. A module has run out of charges. Yep, my luck was not with me. I'm gonna have to go through another siege cycle. That is really unfortunate. I could try and see if maybe one shot could kill it, but the, the cycle times, if you're not in Siege in the Phoenix, is just stupid wide, like stupidly large. Should die in two shots at least. Bing, and can we get the last one? Bong. There we go. And this can finally finish the scan. It lived for 27, uh, well, an hour minus 27. So a little over half an hour is what it took for us. We get this furnished as we look at it. It's now done. It gets this nice, wonderful glow. And as you might have noticed, we still get drones warping in. Don't really mind. Not the greatest drop this time. We got some data. That's nice. We got a sentinel. Use a plasmid. Can drop that back in. Let's kill these guys while we still have them on field, because after all, they do have some nice bounties. Obviously, in a 30% modified system, it's not really that great, but we'll take what we can take. Six shots to you. And six shots to you. Unless I counted that wrong. I definitely counted that wrong. Are you hoping for that? Oh, I didn't die. One last shot. Another node. I really like these drones. They look so nice. But alas, it has to die. Really taking a beating this time. Very interesting. Nevertheless, we're done here. We're taking everything here, and this should self-destruct in a moment. We will be finishing our siege. It is now up to you to leave. And here goes the self-destruct of the beacon. Obviously, if we had not grabbed what was in it, we would now be in a situation where anyone could warp in, grab the loot, and leave. That's obviously not the case here. At this point in time, if you wanted to, you would be able to drop a mobile tractor unit, get a salvaging ship to come in here, and get yourself some drone salvage. To add a little more to the cost of running one of these. Nevertheless, I seem to have docking access to this, so I will be flying over here once I'm able to. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can use this in the future. Bye-bye.